I wanna, I wanna drip like this. I wanna drip like this. Just some working in the morning. Now I'm on the midnight shift. I wanna drip like this. I wanna drip like this. Oh, they want me in the casket. Can't kill me, I'm a bad bitch. I wanna drip like this. I wanna drip like this. Something came up in a recent personal conversation I have with someone, and it was pertaining to the challenges with intimacy. And that's something that happens in any relationship, any marriage. After X amount of time, you run into a scenario where someone in the relationship loses interest to have sex. It's not uncommon, let's just say. I'm, if for all you folks that are totally healthy and happy, good for you. But there's other relationships out there where as time goes on, the frequency changes and the intensity and the passion, that honeymoon state is long and gone. And now you're, you're dealing more with the day to day conveniences of dealing with each other, handling each other's things, spending time together, planning dates, working on the next move, where you're going to move to, so on and so forth. And I feel that through it all, there's so many people that I talk to and just recently I was talking to someone about how they were telling me that the reality of the situation is that they're not getting the intimacy they like. Everything else is great. But when it comes to the intimacy, it's a challenge. Thus, the thought starts creeping in there of them wanting to do other things and exploring other things. Other options. Maybe... Maybe flirting with somebody online that knows, likes them. It, it, it starts opening up Pandora's box of quenching that thirst. And I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball. And I believe a lot of problems begin there. I think ultimately it all begins. It, it all happens in the beginning because no one's being transparent and honest about who they are. And in the process of being with one another, if changes happen in your thoughts, people don't uh, what's the word? They're not open enough to talk about it. So, for example, if a partner after two years just loses interest in having sex because you've gained weight, that's a very rough conversation to have with somebody. Or somebody says, like, you know, I, I, I really know people don't really express themselves as to why they've changed with the intimacy. And I think it comes from a place of complacency that you've someone was playing along. And they understood that having sex was the way to get you. I think that monotony. I think that some people uh, see that the partner has lost interest in the passion of the intimacy. For me, I can't be involved with somebody if the passion, I don't feel it. Like if you're acting like a log and you're not into it, you're just doing it as a job, then I don't get turned on. I don't want to have any interest. And I think other people don't care. There's no right or wrong, but... I think that everyone has a desire of intimacy, of being wanted or having that experience with somebody, and hopefully with their partner. But then over a long period of time, those things change. And now you're in a conundrum where everything else is going great in the relationship. You guys get along. You finally, there's less arguing. You have a flow, ebb and flow of how you like doing things and living with one another. But for some reason, the intimacy is just not there anymore. Or the passion isn't there as it was in the beginning. But it all it's always one person that loses it. I've lost it. I know many friends that have lost it. And there's other friends that still have it, but their partner has lost it. And for those folks that haven't lost it, but their partner has, that's when you start having those challenges of, okay, I need to scratch this itch big time. How do I do it? How do I go about doing that and i think that's where people are not open and communicating is the biggest lapse it's the biggest issue because this is where i always go back to my challenges with dating and being in a relationship is that no one is forthcoming no one wants to talk about these possibilities that can occur and no one wants to lay them out on the table and just hypothetically talk about it i'm not saying you have to put it as a matter of fact but you have to say look if we're two years down the road and things change, what are your thoughts on this? And if they want to say, okay, you know, I'm never going to be like that. Okay, cool. Then what happens is two years later, if all of a sudden you lose that drive, I'm going to remind you of that conversation. Okay? Because we need to address it. Because it's going to be a problem. 
and I've run into so many men. I, I, I really have where they're frustrated at home because the woman has lost their mindset or, or the intensity or the passion to take care of them sexually. But then they're wanting to still be taken care of with the bills and the lifestyle and so on and so forth. But they're expecting the guy to understand if they don't have the feelings. And that's the one thing I always go back to that bothers me is that women always go back to or, or the partner that isn't sexually interested anymore just says, well, if you love me, you would support me in that. But I could flip that question around. I could say, well, if you love me, then you would do things that you don't want to do, but you do it because you love me because you know I need that intimacy. You know that I need that connection. And you're not you're not helping me have that release in a passionate way. Then something needs to be resolved here. And I've, listen, I've talked to a lot of people about this where they've been in relationships and one partner has said, this is the beginning. If people are open minded, that, those are the root beginnings of when people have those unconventional hybrid situations that are on the wraps meaning where they have polyamorous where they're allowing their partner to play under certain rules because after a certain time one person is not able to keep up with the other there in other other facets they're definitely 100 percent in but when it comes to the level of intimacy when it comes to the level of of, of the sex one person loses interest and then they're expected to suppress that and I believe when you suppress something, you're creating a bad situation that is going to snowball internally and it's going to manifest itself into something when you're withholding or not giving that person that sex. Because when it comes to men, I'm talking about from a man's perspective, when it comes to intimacy, if they're used to having it uh, five times a week and they're still having it five times a week and they're still itching and scratching for five times a week. It, it sucks, but you got to do it. And conversely, as a guy, you got to flip the switch for your woman if she wants it. And I understand that if, if there's challenges, you know, you don't feel the same way. And that's okay. But then that's where both people have to be open minded and understand that reality. So, for example, if I'm with a woman that is just not into having the type of sex that I want, even though we had it in the beginning, but not anymore, then you either have to man up and do it work your way into being that way again or we're going to have to discuss about other options because you're telling me to just disregard it altogether. that's not going to happen because what happens then that's when people go to the massage parlors that's when people go to escorts that's when people mess around with the co-workers another frustrated co-worker in their marriage and relationship and that's where things manifest themselves it's very rare if you take care of your partner at home and I'm talking about men. If you take care of your partner at home, you're minimizing the chances of them cheating on you. I'm not saying it's 100% foolproof, but if you're in a position where you're just going ahead and pleasing your man anytime he needs it, the same way he likes it, how often he needs it, you're going to be fine. And I've met women that talk about that, that they feel that a lot of women don't understand that. They feel that a lot of women don't understand that they have to go above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to pleasing their man. Because if they have that urge and they've exuded that urge from the beginning, then they have to sustain that. Just like a woman expects a man to sustain the attention, sustain the flowers and the gifts and romancing them, right? Keep watering that plant. The same way goes with women with intimacy. You have to keep stepping it up. And performing and performing, is it exhausting? I can imagine. Imagine having kids, having to work, and then having to come home and doing things on days you don't want to do them. I get it. But that's where if you're not into it and you wanted that man to understand that you got to be open-minded to understand that, look, he has urges. He has needs. And I've had many people tell me that that was the roots of them having a hyper, or not a hyper, but just... Um, a very different relationship where they allow somebody else in and so on and so forth. So I, people, I can't stress that enough because I talk with people all the time about it. People that you look from the outside and they're totally happy. Every facet is taken care of. They have a great family together. They do things. Financial situation is great. They spend time, but then they don't have that connection and intimacy 
one person doesn't. Maybe the other person does, but one person doesn't. That's all it takes. And no one's being open-minded about it. They'll say, well, I'm tired. I'm just not into it. Instead of being honest about it, and, and you don't have to be blunt and ugly about it. You can say, you know, I'm just not into you like that anymore. I, I, I've lost it. I, I want to rebuild it. Let's try some different things. You know, let's just kind of work at it. I, I'll tell you my problem, but let's find a solution for it. And I'm telling you that I feel that's the beginning of something. But again, I try to look for that type of personality, like-minded in the very beginning, that I know I can talk to openly about things if we had a snag along the way. That's where I always go back to the like-mindedness because I'm not going to be with somebody, not anymore. Before, I would be okay with contrasting views, but now I understand that I need to be with somebody that thinks along the same line, that is open to that. I'm not wanting that from the beginning. I want to be with my person forever and ever. But if we hit a, a, a big roadblock after five years and something is just not clicking there anymore, we have to be honest with each other and to one another. And let's let's kind of explore this and go from there because sometimes it's harder to rekindle that fire. Sometimes you're in a different zone altogether when it comes to that person. Sometimes... I've seen people where it's just like a, a a life cycle sorts, you know, meaning that there is an expiration date to that experience and then they're more settled in that loss settles down. And but I think that for one, it always happens to one person and the other person is left to suppress it, to deal with it. And I don't think that's fair. And uh, that's why when I talk to people, I, I just wish that they legalize all that stuff. They, they went ahead and legalized the massages and all that stuff because you would have for for a lot of people out there that really want an outlet but don't want to have the emotional connection that that would be a great way of doing it and i know that i was talking to somebody about that they were telling me you know that's that's the route they go because their situation at home is not one where they're getting the love that they want to get so that's that's the resolution you know that's the way they go about it i've known other people where they start playing with fire at the workplace they start going online they start creating these these different profiles and things you know it's just the myriad of things that people do because of that manifestation of suppressing their urges of intimacy and is not being provided by their partner but you're asking them to prove provide you everything else but for some reason the one thing that you know caused for you to bond is not there or is not as as live as it was before what do you do and that's a case by case scenario. Universally, I don't know what to do. I, I know for me, I'm always open to options. I have to always hope for the best and plan for the worst. So hope for the best is that we could live happily ever after and that we could just be more than enough to one another. And that's that, right? But then you, you, I always plan for the worst in the sense of, okay, so if things don't go right, what are we going to do about it? Like if we're and I love throwing those hypotheticals when I get into a connection with somebody. Not in the beginning, but once we hang out and things like that, you get a feel for somebody. And I've had the older women always tell me that. That they said, Listen, if you want to get somebody like that, they, they don't have to necessarily be in it. They just have to be open minded. Because they'll understand at a later point, let's say if you're together for seven years, ten years that if you have an itch to scratch and you're just not up for it, they trust the bond, the connection you have to explore other options. I'm not about that. I don't think that that's, you know, you live and let live. I'm not going into a relationship thinking that. But if you have to be realistic as well, because I think people get into it that they want this exclusivity and and it's not necessarily a thing that you you can provide exclusivity if you provide all those things to your partner and they, like i said even then is not a guarantee and but you you're trying to minimize the chances of things venturing out to somebody else that's where i feel with women when you start men when you start neglecting your women at home with attention and not doing the things that you did to court them in the first place they're gonna drift away to somebody else and women if you're not taking care of your man how he wants to be pleased then he's going to be drifting away as well. And I remember talking to a woman, married woman, she was telling me about that. Basically for her, she understood that it was her job to please her man anytime he wanted to. That, that's the way she told me. So it, it, He just gives me a nod. Anytime of the day, I'll go ahead and blow him. 
And if, if he wants this, or that, and the third, I do it. I have no problem pleasing my man by any means because that's my man. That's what he is driven sexually since I've met him. And that was something that was important to him. Thus, why I am being this way. And I understand that. And she's always reminded herself of that. that this is what he wants. I got to do it. No matter if I'm sick, no matter whatever it is, if he wants to release, I got to help him. I got to do it. And unfortunately, I feel from my case in point, I just see women that want you to mold to whatever it is they like. So if they don't want to have sex with you for a while, they want you to also not have one sex for a while. And that's okay. But you can't also think that I'm going to suppress that urge because I'm a human. I have needs. I have wants. And that's where... I, I wish people were more open-minded with communication. I wish people would understand that suppressing it or asking your partner to put it away because if he loved you, he would understand. It, it, it's a easy cop-out because if the tables were turned, that's when I say, yeah, you, you probably would do it for him. But at the end, he has an urge. And part of the big reasons why he's being with you because of intimacy he enjoys it he wants to share you in that way and i always talk to people that say you know that doesn't last long and i understand that like at the end when we get older none of that is going to be a big issue but i'm thinking about the now i'm thinking about what's going on now and right now i need it right now it's something that's important to me and to many other people when they're in a relationship so you you want to think all futuristic and long term about how you just want to have this emotional connection, people taking care of you, right? And somebody to be there at your deathbed. But you have to understand, you got 20, 30 years to get there. So when you're, you, you're kind of overseeing the 20, 30 years of attraction, of intimacy, of, of having these urges and these, these desires that you're not willing to go full throttle on for your partner because you're just not there. You, you got to really look in the mirror and understand yourself and, and be honest with it from the beginning. But I just feel bad for so many people that I talk to about that because it, it's a it's a stark reality. I lived it. I know many friends lived it. I know people that are very close that lived it and, or and are currently living it. And it's it's an ugly thing because it's not as if they're wanting to go down that road. It's not as if they're saying, you know, what, I want to go cheap. But the urge is so strong. The urge is so strong that if something was to occur, if something was to stumble upon them, if, if, if for some reason some girl wanted to get his attention, he's not going to say no. He's not going to turn it away because he's going to be like, well, I need it. My wife is not giving it to me. My woman is not giving it to me. Just like, you know, and the women, the way they say it is, well, emotional cheating is that, well, I'm not having sex. But you, you're you're giving somebody something, and I I believe that what a therapist told me a long time ago was true is that cheating is when you're doing something that your partner doesn't know. It's not about you fucking somebody else, even though most people view it that way. Cheating is about you doing things behind your partner's back without them knowing. So if you're having an emotional relationship where you're talking to somebody at work and then texting and all that. And you have these strong feelings and you feel like this BFF bond with the opposite sex where you're spending more time talking to that person than your own partner. Yeah, that's a problem that you're cheating on somebody. You're cheating the moment anything you're doing behind your partner's back. You're cheating whether you want to if, if, if in your case is a white lie or not. That's cool, but you're cheating. And and I just wish that people were just more transparent from the beginning and and more open to things because I think we all know that if things go great, there's nothing to worry about. You're going to be posting pictures every fucking day. I see it all the time on social media. People just posting pictures of the relationship. And it's awesome because I like seeing people happy. Right. But no one plans for the worst case scenario. No one plans of, man, what if I lose interest in intimacy? What if he loses interest in, in, in fucking me? What am I going to do? What, what, what are the options? You know, and that's the thing about it that more so than ever, I try to have those conversations. And I wish more people did. I know it takes away the magic of getting to know somebody and, and just kind of leaving things up in the air about the romance is something that has to be experienced during a connection, especially with women. But 
if, if you were to just be more pragmatic and more realistic about the possibilities of the pitfalls that can happen, right? Because we see them all around us. That's the thing about it. You may think you're an exception, but you're not because people that you hang out and fraternize with, they're dealing with this some tough challenges that you probably know that you know it's not going to be you, but it can't happen. It definitely can't happen, and and you just can't deny that reality. So that's the way I think of it. I think of it as, hey, I can't say that it will never happen to me because it can. Meaning that I could, I could lose interest in somebody that I'm intimate with and in a relationship with. So what are you going to do then? You know, and I, and I make sure I have those conversations in the light about way when I am meeting with somebody. But I think most people just don't care. It's like they just feel like, okay, I'm your one stop shop. Nothing's going to happen. We'll figure it out. But we're human and we see all these tales all around us far too common. And I always go back to that statistics of uh, basically half of the people that get married get divorced. So if you're looking at five out of ten that are still married, we all know people of, that are still married that are have done things behind their partner's back, have have been caught doing things behind their partner's back. So you're really looking at a small percentage of people that are truly happy in a conventional romantic Disney-like fairy tale. And that's what people keep telling themselves. It's like they're going to be that one out of ten. And you could want to be that. You could hope to be that one out of 10, but plan on being part of that nine out of 10 and then understand that, okay, what is going to be the worst case scenario that I can deal with? Don't be ignorant.